see. All right, you may be seated. Brother Wayne, come on to the platform if you would. All right, tonight we'll continue our preaching in the pew, from the pew. We, some people preach in the pew. Uh, we're going to have preaching from the pew. And uh, so people preach a lot of places. A lot of people preach at home, preach in their car, preach on the street. We have preaching from the pew. So we've asked uh, a couple of our men uh, each a week. And uh, so we've uh, asked several. And if you have an interest in being a part of preaching from the pew, if you'll give us your name, uh, we're scheduled to continue that the uh, rest of this month. But uh, uh, for someone that would like a, a turn at preaching from the pew, we'd be glad to give you an opportunity as well. We've had some great sermons. And uh, so we are excited about uh, the two distinguished gentlemen that we have tonight. And uh, so uh, tonight we'll start off with our own Brother Wayne Essex. He's going to preach for us tonight. So you give him your undivided attention. <laughs> I brought something. It wasn't lunch, though. It's amazing. When Charlie called me a couple weeks ago to preach, he he said that, you know, we had every bit of 20 minutes to preach. So I don't understand why Charlie would ask me to do something that he cannot do. I know Pastor Siler can't do it. I've never seen Pastor Siler preach a 20-minute sermon in my life. Yeah, yeah, right. Times two. But I'm going to attempt to preach a message. Is that Dave Ross in our service? Wow. Hi, Dave. Yeah, praise good, man. It's good to see you. Hi. How are you, Carol? Good. Now I'm all nervous. One of the heroes in my life is in the service. Dave Ross and I, what we celebrate, Pastor Siler, is we went to the same grade high school. We went to Northridge High School. We're both polar bears. He just looks a little bit more like a polar bear than me. I want to share a message with you tonight. Wendy's probably not like any message you've ever heard. Of course, I know you've heard a lot of strange messages coming from your husband with a lot of titles. But I'm going to share a message with you tonight. And the title of this message is, and especially for you teenagers, you guys are taking notes, right? Quit lying to me. Title my message tonight, Kent. Be a bar bouncer. Be a bar bouncer. You say, Wayne, be a bar bouncer? Yeah, and I even brought my own refreshments. Brought my own refreshments. I got these out of Dan Mamua's refrigerator. He told me they were his wife, so... Wes, you know what this stuff is? Never seen. He lies about other things too, doesn't he? Yeah. Be a bar bouncer. Let's open up with a word of prayer, okay? Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us, for your many blessings upon our life. Uh, thank you for this great church that you allow us to come to. And Father, thank you for being so good to us and giving us such a great staff and pastor here. And I just pray, Father, that you'd... Uh, Help me tonight, be Mr. Kincaid, Father, and I just pray that the little bit of things that I can share from your word would be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name, amen. So be a bar bouncer. Bar is spelled, you have a Christian school education? You know how to spell bar? Okay, you're a little slow. Bar is spelled B-A-R. But bar is going to be an acrostic tonight. I'm going to make three points off of, I'm going to make a couple points off of B, a couple points off of A, a couple points off of R. I'm going to make some alliteration off of those. So B, a bar, B-A-R, bouncer for your family, for your church, and for your community. We all know, don't we? We all know what happened on August 4th here in Dayton, Ohio. In the Oregon district, a young man by the name of Connor Betts had a gun that was modified to shoot like a rifle. 
Went down there off Fifth Avenue, Evan. Fired 60-some shots. Killed nine people. Wounded another 30 other people. You know, Dayton, Ohio has been through some rough times with the tornadoes and now with this. One o'clock in the morning on August 4th, my family and I, we leave for vacation that very morning, and so I kind of watched and observed all these things, and I read many, especially Internet articles. One Internet article I read, Josh, was about the bouncer at Ned Pepper's. Josh, I'm not going to ever ask if you've ever been down to the Oregon District, because you lied to me anyway, right? Okay. But the bar bouncer, Karen, was a guy named Jeremy Granger. And they said in that particular Dayton Daily News article, by the way, has your husband ever been to a bar? Yeah. Does he still go to a bar? How, how do you know? Because I was with him. Oh, oh you were with him at the bar? Mm. Pre preacher, do you know about this? <laughs> Last weekend, preacher. <laughs> I do notice you guys sit closest to the brewski. Okay. But Jeremy Granger, the bouncer at Ned Pepper's Bar, he is credited with being a hero. Why was he a hero? They said that his actions kept some people inside that bar, wouldn't let some people out. He's credited with saving probably dozens and dozens and dozens of lives, all because he stood at the door. He didn't run. He stayed at the door. He directed people. And what impressed me, Larry, about that article was that he said, I would have died before I would have let that guy in this bar. I would have died before I would have let that guy in this bar. And I thought, here is a bar bouncer, and I don't know Jeremy's spiritual condition whatsoever, but here's a guy that was willing to die for some people so that they could celebrate this. One o'clock in the morning, Oregon District. What are they down there for? This. And here's a guy that would be willing to die so that people could drink more of this. But how about us? Please don't open that, Karen. Not, not here. How do you put up with her? So I'm going to ask you tonight. Do you realize what we're in? Yeah. Hey, John, you've been reading my notes? Yeah, he said it. We're in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. A, a good friend of mine on, on Tuesday, he sent me a, a, a text. Uh, some of you guys have probably heard his commercials. Greg McAfee, him and I are good friends. And he sent me a little text, and he sent me a text with a picture of Connor Betts. Connor Betts had this black polo shirt on with two symbols. And he asked me a question. He says, Wayne, do you know what those two symbols are? I didn't know what those two symbols were. So I, seen, I responded that way, and he says, those are two satanic symbols. Connor Betts was a Satanist. How much of that do you hear in the news? Did you see the hoodie that Connor Betts was wearing when they pulled his face up off, the, off, off Fifth Avenue? He had this black hoodie on, and on the black, back of that black hoodie, was it was some more satanic symbols? And Karen, it said on the black that back on the back of that black hoodie, it said, "No heart to give, no soul to take." Connor Betts, you were wrong. One second after that final bullet from that Dayton police officer entered his heart and he died, he found out that he'd been deceived by Satan. Because the Word of God tells us in, in Peter. For us to be strong, you know, because Satan is walking about seeking whom he may devour. He devoured Connor Betts. But how about you guys? How brave are we? Do we stand up when it's time to stand up, or do we curl up? Do we stand? 
Do we stand against everything that's going on in our society? What kind of backbone do we have? Do we have a backbone against what's going on in our society? Do we have any kind of pushback of what's going on in our society? I mean, King David, a little shepherd boy, Amos, would lay down and protect his sheep, and a lion came, and he killed that lion with his bare hands, Mason. Killed a, a bear with his bare hands. Denise, and we know about the story of David and Goliath. One of the things that impressed me, Matt, I'm sure you've been in situations like this as a police officer, Jeremy Granger, he said when he was standing at that door, he said he was shaking. He was shaking. And when the Dayton police officers finally killed Connor Betts, Connor Betts died three feet from Jeremy Granger. With Jeremy Granger standing there holding the door saying, I would die before I let someone in. But how about us? What are we willing to die for? Are we willing to die for our family? Does any of this make you guys mad? Do you get angry? I mean, the Word of God tells us in Ephesians that we're to be angry and sin not. You know, I was watching on the Internet, and, you know, of course, Donald Trump came to town, and, Mike DeWine came to town. and Craig, before Mike DeWine got up to speak, and he had this big crowd, and before he could ever open his mouth, the crowd started chanting. Anybody see his speech? The crowd started chanting, Do something! Do something! Do something! Do something! That chant went on for many, many seconds. Wes, that crowd had it wrong. Donald Trump, it's not Donald Trump's job. It's not our house. It's not the White House. It's not our house. It's not the State House. It's not even the Church House. You know whose responsibility it is to protect your family? It is your house. We're to train up our children in the way that they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. But we need to pray for the Betts family. Can you imagine what they're going through? Their son, a mass murderer, killed his sister with the very first shot. Of course, not much of this is out in the news either. You know, his sister is part of the transgender community. She no longer wanted to be called by her name. She wanted to be called by Jacob. What kind of society have we got? You know, we need to accept responsibility for what's going on, and we need to push back. You know, another way we can accept a little responsibility? You know, the politicians, they all talk about, the Democrats all say it's a gun problem. The Republicans all say it's a mental health problem. They're both wrong. It's a sin problem. Interesting story in the Word of God found in Luke 22. The night that Jesus, the night before Jesus is crucified, he's with his disciples, and they've had the Lord's Supper, and they're out. One of the disciples says to him, we have two swords. Is that enough? And Jesus said, yes, that's enough. Here we are, the Prince of Peace, been on the earth for three years. It's okay with him for his disciples to carry swords. And we know the story. When Malchus come up and tried to lay hands on Jesus, what, what did Malchus do? He got his ear cut off. Does anybody in here think that he was trying to cut his ear off? That Peter was trying to cut his ear off? Peter was trying to cut his head off. He just wasn't a very good aim with his sword. But the, as the Prince of Peace, as we all know, put that ear back on, completely healed. What are we willing to do? Are we willing to stand in the gap? Are we willing to fight? Are we willing to die for our family? 
Are we willing to die for our church? Jeremy Granger says, I wasn't going to let anybody in. I'm going to die before someone gets in here. And then finally, can I give you a couple final points? So I gave you B, I want you to be brave. I gave you A, I want you to be angry. I want to give you R. I want you to resist. You know, it tells us in James 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. What we need to do is to reject the worldview and what's going on in our society. Where is the accountability for the TV, for all the movies, for the music, and for the video games? Where is that accountability out there? Are you hearing any pushback to those folks? Our young men and our young ladies, they, they see tens of thousands of murders before they turn 18. You think that has some kind of effect on them? Terry, have you watched recently any video games that's, that are geared towards young men? You know what video games are that are geared towards young men? Do you know what they involve? They involve, first of all, girls that look like Barbie, but with less clothes on. They involve fighting and killing and shooting and destroying. You're telling me, young men that watch these types of videos for hours and hours and hours a day are not affected by it? You know they're affected by it. Where is the pushback on that industry to listen to that type of music? Did you see what kind of band Connor Betts was in? Do you see the name of his band? It's a play on words. I hope this is not offensive to anybody. Minstrel was the first part of that. His band glorified killing and raping women. I didn't even know there was a porno grind music industry out there. Why is there a porno grind music industry? Because there are people that are willing to watch that and listen to that. Where is the pushback on our society? And finally, folks, we need to reestablish some respect in our society. You know, where is the respect these days for parents, for teachers, for pastors, for police officers? You know, when I was a kid, I realized Brenda was a long time ago, but when I was a kid, you know, if I got in trouble at school, and I did, at Northridge High, I got in trouble at school. Guess where else I was at trouble at? Home. So where is that respect today? We need to make sure we're modeling that respect, teaching that respect. Can I just have you bow your heads and close your eyes just for a couple quick minutes? You know, I've asked you to be a bar bouncer for your family, for the church, for your community. I want you to be brave. I want you to get angry. I want you to be mad about some of these things. I want you to resist. And with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to tell you a little story. Back in 2012, I had a client whose son lived in Colorado. That son was in that Aurora Colorado movie theater, July 20th, 2012, at the midnight showing of The Dark Night Rises. When James Holmes burst into that theater, killed 12 people, wounded 70 others, and so when I'm meeting with the parents just a few weeks after that, matter of fact, they'd just gotten back the day before from burying their son when they were in my office. I watched uh, a lady cry so hard and sob so hard that she made the front of her blouse wet. I saw a broken-hearted mom 
But then I heard the, the dad sitting there in very soft voice over the sobs of his wife say to me, he says, Wayne, if just one person would have stood up and challenged that guy, probably could have saved many, many lives. How about you folks? With those heads bowed and eyes closed, where are your kids at? Where are your grandkids at? Are you going to guard the door? Are you going to stand there and die? Are you going to stand up to some little 13-year-old boy that can't grow hair under his arms, and, and he, you're going to let him get up in your face, and he's going to tell you what he's going to do? We need to have some backbone, folks. We need to be brave. We need to be angry. We need to accept responsibility. We need to arm ourselves. We need to resist the devil. You know, we need to push back and reject the society, and we need to teach respect. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, would you join with me and say, to the best of my abilities, I'm going to go out of here and be a bar bouncer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you lift your head? Lift your head and lift your hands. Preacher, it's all yours. Amen. Well, <clears throat> it's a good question, Wayne. You'll have to answer that question. <laughs> well, yeah, the world's always saying do something, and uh, you know the turmoil in our in our society. Basically, something could be done if we would make some laws against alcohol and, and harder penalties for drugs, and this type of thing, you know. But in our city, we are trying to do something. Just recently, uh, our city leaders made a big decision that uh, they were not, no longer going to hire any employees that smoke cigarettes. That was their decision. Really going to, you know, and it was really a selfish decision. It wasn't about we're trying to save lives, but we're trying to save money on health insurance was their total, total reasoning behind that we're going to go after people that smoke. So if you smoke, don't even apply for a job at the city of Dayton. Wow, can you, can you imagine I'm not for smoking, but I tell you what, leave the smokers alone and go after the boozers. You know, leave the smokers alone right now and go after, you know, if, if I'm going to meet somebody on the highway, if I have my choice to meet someone with a cigarette in their mouth or a bottle of beer in their hands, I think I would want to meet the one with a cigarette. Amen. And if I cough, it doesn't mean I've been smoking. <laughs> Well, thank you, Brother Wayne. Wow, that's good, good thinking, you know. It's good to get angry. We just need to get angry at the right thing. And, um, you know, sometimes we don't get angry enough until it really hits so close to home, it's almost too late. It's, it's heartbreaking. You know? Wow. All right. Miss Kristen, you're going to, where's Miss Kristen? She's going to sing, or here you are. She's going to sing before her father. It's not Steve Harvey. It's our own Mo Kincaid. He doubles as Steve Harvey during the week, but on Wednesdays and Sundays, he is our own Mo Kincaid. He'll be preaching after this song. He's the hand that holds me steady when the storm blows in to stay. He's the solid rock I run to when all else gives away. He's the shoulder I lean on when my hope has died. The arms I fall into each time that I cry, I don't know. But trusting Him. What he might ask of my life, I only know how far his love goes. I don't know what the future holds for me, where this lonely road will lead. I only 
sin who offers me forgiveness again and again he picks up the pieces when my hope has died he is the redeemer of my shattered heart your kids grow up serving the Lord. Amen. It is a joy. And uh, I have four. And um, that's the baby. And um, she just signed a lease, not a lease, but a mortgage. So now she got a mortgage payment. So she really growing up right in front of our eyes. But it is a joy to watch your kids grow up serving the Lord. Parents, don't give up on them. Kids, appreciate your mom and dad who care. They might seem out of touch. They might get on your nerves. They might get in your business. It's because they love you. Don't never push that aside because many of your friends will tell you, parents who don't care, they'll let you know. They'll say, my mom and dad don't care. When they say that, you can see the hurt in their face. Appreciate it. Don't ever turn your back on it. You might hurt their feelings along the way, but they'll stand with you. They'll forgive you. Don't ever push them aside. When Brother Charles called me and, and asked, well, first of all, when he called, um, it was shortly after I had been in the hospital for knee surgery. As you see, things are getting better. I walked up here with no help. No help. Now, I might have heard it, but I didn't need no help. So Charles had been checking on me. He had been coming by the hospital, and I had an episode where I had a blood clot that caused me to faint after my knee surgery. So there was a scary moment there. And uh, so Charles and Wendy came by, and they checked on me, and uh, so, so I appreciated that. Then I was released from the hospital, and I was sent home. And about a week or so later, I get a phone call, and it says, Charles Webb. And I said, oh, okay, he's just checking on me. So I answered the phone, hey, Charles, how you doing? Hey, Brother Mo, I'm, uh, so the conversation goes on. He says, um, um, so how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. Things are getting better. I think those are some words that he was wanting to hear. And he says, um, uh, can you stand for 20 minutes? Oh, boy, where this is going? And I said, yeah, I think so. 
And he says, uh, well, how about uh, preacher from the pew? Oh, wait, wait a minute now. So, you sure? <laughs> I'm the guy? And um, so, Brother Charles, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Pastor. Um, it truly is an honor for me to stand up here and stand before you and share my heart. Um, before I get into my material, I'd like to ask for your prayer. My sister, Sheila Davis Kincaid, has a major heart procedure tomorrow. Sometime around 11 ish is the scheduled time for her surgery. There's a 60 40 chance she'll make it. And she's younger than I am. I'm the oldest. She's, I think Sheila's 55. I'm 55 in a couple of days. You didn't even get that. Because <laughs> we ain't twins. <laughs> but um, she has a major heart surgery tomorrow. So we, the family covers your prayers for her. That God will see her through. This is, this is going to be tough. So, um, um, so I appreciate that. Preacher um, um, mentioned that... Um, you know, during the week, I'm on Wednesdays and Sundays, I'm, I'm Mo Kincaid, but the rest of the week, I'm, I'm Steve Harvey. <laughs> so, so there are times when the preacher would say, before you leave tonight, make sure you shake hands with four or five people. And um, so Faye and I would be sitting in the back, and we'd get up and we introduce ourselves to people. And some folks have come up to me and say, hey, how you doing, sir? Are you new? Are you, it's your first time visiting? I'm like, no. We've been members for quite a while now. And um, so just to be clear, just to be clear, um, if I could have the first slide up on the, on the my daughter, Kiki, Kristen, posted a picture of us for Father's Day. Is it up there? Oh, I do. Oh. Bear with me. Huh? Oh, <laughs> now you tell me. So for Father's Day, Kristen posted this picture of us, of us on Facebook. And I got so many compliments. Thank you, Kiki. Um, in addition to what took place on August 4th, there's another topic that has gotten a lot of attention over the last few months, few years. And the title of this, my message is, and this subject is border control. Border control has sparked a... Uh, a lot of emotions on both sides of the issue. Even amongst Christians, we talk about border control and should we build walls to protect our borders? But tonight, I don't want to focus in on policy because some people say we got bad policies in place or there have been some bad decisions made related to border control. I don't want to focus in on policies. Some people say that it's, it's a political issue. Some people say it's a cultural, inappropriate issue. So I don't want to focus in on policy. I want to focus in on purpose. The purpose of protecting of, of, of borders is to protect or prevent illegal or unlawful entry. That's the whole reason that it's designed to protect against people illegally coming into the country. I'd like to take border control and make it a personal, spiritual, 
practical application. And the reason is God has a book of borders. And as long as you and I live according to God's borders, we'll receive his blessings. But the moment we begin to get outside of his borders, we'll begin to struggle. Many of us can attest to that. I can attest to that. That when I got outside of God's will, things were not the same. I began to experience other things as Christians. Our lifestyle and our walk should be governed by obedience to the Word of God. And if we can keep that in mind, if we can keep our focus on that, we'll stay within the borders. God's not um, looking for um, people who are going to make the right decisions on policies. And you and I have to be careful that we don't get outside of those borders. Because once you cross the line, and there are a lot of things that this world can offer you, things that look interesting, things that look like, the, you know, folks are having some fun. But once you cross the line, you feel like you have a newfound level of freedom. But in reality, you have a newfound level of struggles. Because you hadn't experienced those before, but what you saw that the world was doing and was interesting to them, it sort of pulled you in that direction. God is not a God of chaos or confusion. And in order for God to keep his order, he has his borders. Right? If you would, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. And I'm going to have just a few references of verse, verses tonight. They'll be up on the board. So if you don't have your, your Bible, you can follow along up there. As you can see, the, the board says, um, have you allowed the lines to be crossed? And when we wrap this up, I'm going to challenge you with that question, have you allowed the lines to be crossed? The borders that are laid out in the Word of God. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. There's order in everything that God has created. He doesn't want you and I to be unsure of the direction that he has for our life. That's why he wants us to follow the directions and the boundaries that are laid out in the Bible so that we are confident, we are for sure, how God wants us to live this life. He, wants you, he doesn't want you to walk around unsure or confused about your path for him. So how does crossing the line of God's borders even occur? And this is going to have a little relationship to what Wayne presented a few moments ago. I believe it begins with the content. And I'm going to relate content to what we allow to come into our minds and into our hearts. Because what comes into our mind, the content, where we go, who we hang out with, the things we watch on television, the things we do, the places we go, I am relating that to the content. Because the content that you and I allow into our minds, into our hearts, uh, affects our conduct and our character. Right. Wayne referenced that as young people, they are targeting young men with these video games, and all you see is violence. 
and the minds of these young people is becoming polluted with those type of things because they make it as real as possible. I didn't have to deal with that growing up. I played sports. The only thing we had was um, the early versions of football. And I mean, you compare that to what you see today, it's night and day. So we have to be careful of the content, things that we allow to come into our hearts and to our minds. My wife and I and a couple other teams work with kids here in the church. Many others do too. But we work with uh, the Crossfire group, which is fifth and sixth grade boys. And I recall teaching them, and some of you learned this when you were younger. Those of you in the audience who are part of the singles group, you probably have heard this already, so bear with me. So we teach kids a little simple song, simple lyrics. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the God up above is looking down in love. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. And it goes on to say, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little lips, what you say. Be careful, little hands, what you do. And be careful, little feet, where you go. And as we grow up, we become mature and we think we got it together. And we forget about those few simple warning signs. Because as we grow up, we think that I can handle it now. I can handle the temptations. I can handle the crowd that I know I probably shouldn't be with, but I'm strong enough. I can handle it. And the next thing we know that that content begins to affect our conduct and our character. So the first warning that I, the first border that I wanted to bring before you tonight is the content. Be careful, grandmothers and grandf grandpapas. Pay attention to what's going on with your grandkids. Moms and dads, be involved in your kids and how they're growing up and who they're hanging out with. Be, sometimes you just have to get up in their business. So you, out of respect, I would, I teach my kids, if you see my bedroom door closed, that means that I may not want you to come in yet. So I teach them to knock on the door before they come in. If they knock on the door, I come on in. And so I would return that same favor. Yes? That's all I need. I don't need to ask, can I come in? Right? You just, hey, how you doing? And so you, you walk in there and you become involved in what they're doing. If they're on their tablet, let me see. Oh boy, you, Dad, wait a minute now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Let me, let me close this. <laughs> Parents be involved in what your kids are involved with. They could be lured into a direction where they just kind of want to test the waters. Next thing you know, that it grabs them even more. Don't let go. Wayne brought it up earlier. Our kids are being attacked. We got some young people going off to college. I'm not saying that they're asking for that level of freedom, but they will be presented with a new level of freedom. Who will they surround themselves with when they leave home? They don't have nobody watching over them. There needs to be some accountability. So the first border was content. The second is Conduct. There is an expectation for our behavior. Y'all told me this would work for me. Oh, there we go. The second board is conduct. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. God wants you and I to be the light that reflects him. You and I should be different than those in the workplace, than those that are in our classroom, 
than those that we hang out with. We should be different. Now, I don't know how much help we can make if you are strange, weird, <laughs> goofy. I don't know how much help we can give you on that one. But you, you should at least be different. They should know that there is something different about you. They should know that on Sundays you go to church, on Wednesdays you go to church. They should know that. Because you're going to interact with them. You're going to talk with them. And you're, they're going to ask you, hey, what you do this weekend? You tell them. Saturday I did this. Sunday I went to church. Sunday morning service was about this. Sunday evening was about that. That opens up the door potentially for them to ask you even more. Amen. When the door opens, share your heart with them. God wants us to be the reflection of him. If they know that we are Christians and we go to church and we begin to drift and start doing the same things that they're doing, they're going to wonder, why? Why should I? You're just like me. You over here doing the same thing I'm doing, so why should I? Now, the one positive thing out of this is I'm on my way to heaven. I might not be living like it, but I'm on my way to heaven. That is a difference, but it's hard to convince people who don't understand all that. Content, what we allow into our hearts and our minds is a border. Conduct, our behavior, how we carry ourselves, it's a border. And lastly, character. Because I believe that the, I believe that what we allow inside affects us. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness is not a political issue. Righteousness is a personal choice. A personal choice that is inside out. Because if I do right and you do right, the family is affected. When the family is affected, the church is impacted. When the church is impacted, our city and our communities are affected. When our cities and communities are affected, so will our state. And when our state's affected, it affects our nation. Make it personal. Personal, spiritual, practical application of border control. Be concerned about how you live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The sacrifice that he has made for you and I, you could never understand why. And lastly, I'd like to leave you with this. If you have allowed, if you have allowed the borders to be crossed, see God's face through forgiveness by asking God to change your heart by asking God to help you turn away from the struggles that you're dealing with. I don't think, I believe that nobody in here is exempt. Satan will try and trip every last one of us up. So don't think that you, you got it together. I'd like to leave you with Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Righteousness is a personal choice. What are you and I going to leave here with tonight? Are we going to just take these two uh, brief 
messages and close the Bible and leave them alone, or we're going to think about those things and say, you know what, after making an honest evaluation, I need to change some things in my life because I want to be what God wants me to be. From the youngest to the oldest, everyone in here has a responsibility to somebody else. Don't let go of it. Grab hold of it. Embrace it. Because borders are a blessing. Let us pray. Father, thank you for these few moments together. And Father, I pray that each of us would make an honest evaluation that if there's any area in our life that we need to change, but Father, we come before you and ask for your help. Help us walk away, turn away from whatever struggles we are facing in our life. And Father, if there is someone that we know that is struggling, Father, if we can be some help, uh, point us in their direction. Thank you again, Father, for these few moments together. Pray that you watch over us as a church body. Pray that you bless our efforts as we go forward to spread the gospel here in, in Dayton, Ohio, and to many others around the world through the missionaries that we we love and support for all these things. We pray and ask your son's precious name. Amen. We'll stand at our feet for a time of invitation. For heard two powerful messages tonight. Would you let God speak to your heart would you come and pray for our city come and pray for our families come and pray for our church come and pray that we might battle the things of the world and we might be brave and not be cowards to live for christ we might come angry about the things around us that are tearing the lives of people we love apart. Will we make a decision to resist? Resist the things of the world. And what about the controls, the border controls of our life? The content Is there something coming in that's affecting your life? It may not be something wicked. It may just be something good, but it's tearing you away from God's word. It's tearing you away from the things of the world. What would it be tonight? Con conduct, character, these are all things that we've been challenged with tonight. In the audience with your heads bowed tonight, these are at the altar praying. Would you consider that challenging verse that Brother Moak closed with tonight? If my people, that's us. I believe that possibly everyone in this auditorium tonight is saved. If there's someone that's not saved, we'd be glad to open up a Bible with you tonight and show you how you could be saved. But if my people, which are called by my name, we're called Christians, we're called by his name, what's the call for us from the word of God to find renewal and revival and repentance? The call is to humble ourselves and pray. Seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways, and then then we can hear from heaven. God's people will accept that challenge, then God can heal our land. Our land needs healing. God and God alone can forgive us our sin. Brother Rick, if you'll sing us a verse of invitation, some are still praying here tonight. Decided to follow Jesus. You know that.
that song. You can sing it. Sing it as a testimony tonight. Let it be the testimony of your life. I have decided to follow Jesus. Thank you, Mo, for two challenging messages tonight. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I believe some people believe you are Steve Harvey. So, yeah. So, we're going to check at the airport and see if you fly out tonight. Okay. Would you be seated just a moment? Let me have ushers come. And if you have a prayer request, in just a moment, we're going to dismiss our choir and we will read some prayer requests. If you have some prayer requests tonight, can I encourage you to take the back of an offering? envelope and you can give us that prayer request if you're going to give that to us maybe uh, just uh, hold that for a moment and uh, so we'll collect those prayer requests and read them tonight Uh, so uh, if you use need to use an offering envelope to give us that name that'll be a blessing let me encourage you uh, remind you that we are in a process this month of raising some money for temple christian school uh, Brother Kim, won't you come up and give us a, a brief report on the first day of school? Now, see, let's, let's see what he looks like after one day as principal, officially as principal of, of Cornerstone Baptist uh, Temple Christian School. All right. Uh, all right. So I know there's a lot of excitement around uh, this building today. And so can, give us a little synopsis of what took place today. Well, summing up, it was a great first day. Uh, wow, the Lord really blessed. There was a great spirit with the kids, the students, the teachers, and the parents were really a blessing seeing the parents walk children in for the first day of school this morning. It was just a lot of tears and a lot of smiles. And it, it, it really was a blessing to me as my first uh, day at school as principal. And we didn't have any serious events happen today. Everybody, even the cafeteria was organized chaos. Uh, It it was kind of fun, actually. And so uh, everybody was, just the spirit among the boys and girls was just absolutely wonderful. I taught two Bible classes this morning, and just to look on their faces blessed my heart more than the one I had to say to them. And that was probably the atmosphere in every one of our classes. So if, if today is an indication of how the year is going to go, this is going to be the greatest year ever in the history of Temple Christian School. Amen? So thank you so much for, for what you do to support the school and put your children in it. And you, we need your prayers. We need your money. I'll, I'll let preacher take care of that part. <laughs> uh, don't worry, kid. They'll make up for uh, what didn't happen today will be made up another day for sure. Amen. <laughs> so. Well, I like all these uh, Mo reminiscing about his his youth. Uh, what was you doing, like the first video game of the football game, and you were like Nintendo football? I don't, I don't know. I gave up at Pac Man. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't go beyond Pac Man. I couldn't conquer. But I remember my first football game. You know, as a kid, you know, actually pretty old. It was one where you line your men up on the on the board and then you turn it on and they go <laughs> you know <laughs> they bounce off. <laughs> you, 
There was never any scores because none of them could ever get across the goal. <laughs> they all went out of bounds immediately. <laughs> it was not very fun, but you got, when you got finished with the game, you went to bed going, ah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, well. well, I thank you for the challenge tonight, Brother Mo and Brother Wayne. God bless you. Amen. You have very challenging messages tonight. All right, let's ask God to bless in our offering tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercies to us. And Lord, as we uh, worship you tonight, we've worshiped you in singing, we've worshiped you in, in, with uh, the word of God tonight, and now we worship you with our, with our offerings. Thank you for God's people. Lord, we have a lot of ministries in this church, and these ministries, Lord, are a part of, uh, of what you want us to do. And Lord, uh, I just uh, appreciate, Lord, of your people who are faithful. Uh, to look after these ministries uh, through their tithes and offerings. Bless them, I pray, in a special way. In Christ's name, amen. If you look this way, if you recognize these glasses, would you please claim them? Um, because in desperation, if you don't claim them, I can see out of them. And I'm afraid one day I'll pick them up and try to preach a sermon with them on. So if you recognize these, please. They were inside the pulpit. And uh, I was really looking last, uh, last service. I needed a pair of glasses. And I, I saw glasses and I pulled them out. And you can be thankful I didn't put them on. But uh, please reclaim these glasses. Uh, if not, uh, if you don't claim them tonight, if you'd like to get them, they'll be on eBay tomorrow. Okay, so, uh, okay. Let's have our choir. You can be dismissed. Our ushers, would you uh, come forward and pass out some uh, prayer lists tonight? And uh, our choir will go to practice. If you'd like to be a part of our choir ministry, uh, just uh, slip right on out with these folks. And, and uh, appreciate that, our choir, okay? Also, if you have... Uh, if you have a prayer request tonight that you filled out tonight, why don't you just uh, raise it up and our ushers will get to you. I know most of our ushers are out uh, with the offering right now, but if uh, you'll, anyone have a prayer request tonight that you filled out, just raise it up and kind of wave it and we'll have somebody pick it up for you. I have uh, several, one all the way in the back there. We have a young man in the back. Who is that back there? Is that Cole? Cole's got something to give us. Okay. We'll see what Cole's got for us tonight. Cole probably says, I'm in big trouble. Could you help me? <laughs> so, uh, all right. Anybody else with a prayer request? I, I do need a prayer list. If uh, Any ushers? Do we have some ushers back yet from, uh, from offering ushering? Uh, we need some prayer requests, okay? This is from Cole, okay? All right. Cole, you need a little practice. I think he was trying to make a paper airplane. So we'll, we'll have practice. Have your dad practice with you. He does this all the time. So, you know, go up in his office. You'll find him doing this any day. And every day he'll be up there making paper airplanes and throwing them around his office. All right. Okay, ushers, you have some prayer requests. Uh, now we, I see a few out there, so grab those and let's look at the, the front of the prayer list, please. And uh, we'll look at some of these and then I'll we'll have a, a time of prayer. A gentleman who had uh, a motorcycle accident, still in Miami Valley Hospital, James Wilson, so please do pray for him. Also, Miss Arlene Shepard with some uh, health issues out on Soin Hospital, so please remember Miss Arlene and she is very appreciative of all the prayers that go forth for her. On the inside of the uh, bulletin, upcoming tests and surgeries, little uh, Jackson Herman 
Uh, we'll be having surgery on the 28th <clears throat> at Children's Hospital. Pray for Jackson. He's, uh, uh, he's Temple Christian School and, and Temple Christian School, but he's not able to be in school now. They're trying to keep him, uh, I believe it, although I saw his mom out. Uh, I don't think Jackson was here today, right? Because, uh, it, yeah, okay. Uh, so Jackson is, uh, needs to be kept away uh, so he doesn't get any kind of infection be before the surgery, I believe. So pray for him. Also, John Howe, one of our men, uh, is a seeing a specialist uh, coming up the end of this month with a medical issue. Uh, Miss Charlene uh, Hundley, these are all new additions, um, recovering from a fractured hip and a surgery in July. We didn't know about that. Uh, Miss Charlene called us uh, uh, yesterday to let us know that uh, she had... Uh, that fractured hip and surgery at the end of July, about two weeks ago or three. So uh, please pray for her. Uh, also back to Joe Ramirez, uh, also on there, he is diagnosed with some cancer and uh, praying for um, his, his treatments. Um, Bill Thomas still in, uh, in a rehab over at uh, the Elizabeth Place, Ron Jackson, Patrick, little Pat Patrick Gabbard um, is, uh, I understand that possibly uh, uh, things have, have not turned out to the best right now for him and just pray that maybe something could come up he's has uh, some brain uh, uh, problems as a young just a, a young infant and uh, so it's uh, uh, real real stressful right now Robert Berger also recovering from a heart procedure I pray for him uh, special medical Miss Ruby Stout uh, with health issues Cole uh, Stiltner in a coma, unsaved, uh, and uh, Patrick Harden. Miss uh, Harden has COPD. I was praying with her last week. Pray for uh, for her and and uh, that uh, she would have some comfort. Cecilia Cooper, medical issues. Uh, Phil and Barb Souders. Uh, Phil having uh, back issues, and uh, Barb is battling some viruses. Uh, Angela Page also seeking second opinion for a medical issue. Um, I'll look at those on special prayer, the new additions, uh, Gladys Stanley and a bereavement and loss of her brother, uh, Luther Holbrook. Up above that was Jerry Ann Oimby and Daniel Long, our uh, uh, new additions this week into a, a prayer list. Also Lynn Cardwell, bereavement and loss of her brother, Mark. And uh, Larry Nevergall is uh, uh, in hospice at home. Uh, so pray for, pray for uh, Larry. Pray for Bob and Arlene Shepard. Uh, Arlene is, of course, in the hospital, and Bob is at uh, a nursing home. So uh, please pray for, for the shepherds in a special way. Special prayer and ongoing uh, uh, columns there. And then also in battling cancer, we do have one addition. Cecil Dixon uh, came to see me this week, and he uh, uh, had a doctor visit uh, just a few days ago, and they did find some cancer. Uh, he, he is scheduled for some treatments. And... Uh, uh, the doctor seems to be up, upbeat about uh, the ability to, uh, uh, you know, to get rid of that cancer. So uh, please pray for Cecil uh, uh, in a special way. I know he would, uh, he would certainly appreciate that. On the back of the prayer list, we have the new additions, uh, those that are highlighted or bold, in bold. We have Aiden uh, Diaz, uh, baby born this morning in NICU in Georgia. Barb Souders give us that. Terry Wilson, possible ovarian cancer. Uh, gives uh, that's uh, 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 Brooke uh, Begley gave us that name, a young lady she knows uh, uh, down in Kentucky, and uh, Nairi Smith battling cancer, traveling. To, uh, uh, I think Linda Archer. I saw that note come in. Linda Archer and her husband on vacation met this couple, and this uh, Mrs. Smith uh, was battling cancer. I guess they were traveling in the United States. Maybe is almost like a something to, you know, a, a treat to her before uh, maybe she had to battle this uh, this fight with cancer. So please pray for them. Also, Dave and Carol Ross here uh, in Ohio for uh, uh, three weeks. And uh, Dave and uh, Carol uh, went up to see Dave's sister, who's up in Canton, Ohio, in a nursing home there, and got to go see them yesterday. And uh, uh, they were escorted up there by uh, Brother Charles and Miss Wendy, and so they had a good time. And uh, so we appreciate having Dave and Carol uh, here with us uh, tonight. Also, uh, Danielle Trailer 
uh, still off work for six weeks up in New Jersey. Uh, please pray for Miss Danielle. Some new uh, names that were given to me that to be added to uh, the prayer list. Miss Karen Hatero gives us uh, uh, Tim Heinrich uh, uh, battling cancer. We'll have that added to the list. Also, uh, Mary uh, Carol Scarborough, also with health concerns. She also gives us uh, her brother-in-law, Ken Terrell, with hip replacement surgery coming up the end of this month. And uh, then also uh, her husband, Terry, uh, having uh, back issues. And uh, Ruby Tipton uh, is asked to be put on the prayer list for having uh, uh, the Ross family asked us to pray for Miriam Watts in Heartland of Centerville. So did you guys, they were looking for Marion, so they found her, right? And uh, so uh, let's pray for Miriam Watts, uh, a longtime friend of uh, this church and a longtime friend of Dave and, and Carol Ross. So those are some names that we have, okay? All right, any other names that uh, someone that we've missed? Okay, go ahead. Okay, Emma Dooley, let's pray for Miss Emma. And hip problems? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mrs. Davidson, yes, uh, is uh, in uh, bed rest. Actually, she's in hospital care till a baby's born. That could be uh, several more months uh, for she's uh, to deliver. So I had a good uh, talk and time with uh, Pete this week. He came in to see me and had prayer. And so uh, please pray for the Davidson family. All right. All right, this is, uh, what do you have here, John? Okay, Jerry Cazell, they're down in Florida. Is that where they're at? Yeah, Jerry, Patty Cazell, uh, members moved down to uh, Florida. So let's, let's pray for uh, Brother Jerry with these aneurysm. It's a uh, pretty severe aneurysm. So let's pray for this procedure he'll be going through, okay? Sandy? Okay. All right, okay. I see. Okay. Okay, somebody else? I'm sorry. Miss Henry? Oh, Elizabeth is, okay, Elizabeth's going to have surgery. And also I had a, a note come up by the Brother Mike. Brother Mike is having some knee problems. Knee problems. He gave me the note and, uh, oh, he was, okay, I see. So I saw his name on I didn't get to read it completely. Okay, so he was uh, giving us a note for Elizabeth. Okay, all right. So pray for our deaf folks. And we appreciate them and their faithfulness and uh, pray for their needs. All right, we're going we're gonna to go to prayer. So let's just bow our heads tonight and ask God to West, Once you come up here, you're right here, uh, here at the front for, would you come up here and pray for us tonight? And if you'll pray, then I'll close this in prayer. And uh, let's not forget the messages we've heard tonight as well. And let's uh, go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. And even though we're so deserving tonight, we get to bow before your throne and to bring our, our concerns to you even though you know already what they are. But Lord, we thank you for the messages that we heard tonight and uh, all the messages that we've heard from the preaching of the pew and the men who have shared their hearts with us. Lord, we just pray that we would carry these things in our heart forward with us. Lord, they've been convicting and Lord, we know that your word does not return void. Lord, as we come tonight, we think of those that are on the prayer list, so many names and so many needs and so many cares and concerns. Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every person that is here. 
on this list and be with their extended families, Lord. Reach out and touch them with an extra measure of your grace as we come to you with these needs, Lord. We thank you for the government of our country, Lord. We pray that you be with every servant. We pray that you be with our president and those that are in Congress, those who are in the state houses and Senate. Lord, for our local representatives, Lord, we just pray that they would seek you in all that they do, in the laws that are debated and passed. And Lord, we pray, Lord, for the leadership of this church, or for all the Sunday school teachers, for our bus directors, for those that are involved in the choir, for those that are involved in the nursery and the junior churches. Lord, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would be with them as they prepare their Sunday school lessons and their junior church lessons and their uh, preaching to the children and to the adults, Lord. Pray that you be with pastor as he does likewise. Lord, we pray that you would lift them all up and that you be with them as they get ready to minister to us this week. And Lord, I'd like to pray especially tonight for Sheila Kincaid for her heart surgery tomorrow. Lord, I don't know where she is or what hospital she's in, but we pray that you would be with the doctors that are uh, preparing for that surgery tomorrow and the nurses and the anesthesiologist and just the entire medical staff. Lord, we ask that you would guide their hands and if it be your will that she would come out of the surgery. Uh, it sounds very iffy, Lord. We just ask that if it be your will, she would come out of the surgery okay. And Lord, we also ask tonight that you would be with our missionaries around the globe, wherever they may be serving you. Lord, we know our, their hearts and minds are fixed upon you and the mission that you have given to them and that their mission is unchanged. But we pray, Lord, that you would lift them and protect them, build a hedge around them, Lord, and that you would bless their ministries to great abundance, to great fruit for the kingdom of heaven. We ask this in the name of your blessed son, Jesus. Amen. Lord, tonight we lift up those on our prayer list tonight. It is hundreds of names on this prayer list. And Lord, I ask also for the list of, the great list of shut-ins and those that uh, are in nursing homes and those are in in. Uh, hospitals, Lord, we lift them up tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just meet the needs they have. Help us, Lord, to not forget them, uh, those that are shut in, those that uh, uh, that cannot make it on a regular basis. God, help us to remember them and show them attention and, and let them know of our, our care and concern. Most notably, let them know of your care and, and concern for them. Lord, I do pray for my wife. I thank you, Lord, for those who pray for uh, for. Uh, Kay and I, and I pray that you would be with her, Lord, and just uh, give her strength day by day. Thank you for good days that you give her. And I pray, God, that you would just work a special work in her in her in her life, Lord. And and uh, we thank you, Lord, that we have her at home, and that you would pray that you would just uh, keep your hand upon her. Thank you for these folks that are here tonight, for these messages that that have touched our heart tonight. God, help us to go away from this uh, place tonight with uh, those. Uh, messages in our heart and let them apply them to our life and we'll th thank you for what you'll do for us in Christ's name and everybody said amen amen God bless you shake some hands now before you leave tonight good to have you here in the Lord's house get your don't forget your glasses are right down here ladies or gentlemen